Today's review is sponsored by the new Pickle in Your Pocket. This way, if someone asks, are you just happy to see me, you can assure them that you're not. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. The Big Racket. Right, you had too many of these beers. They're pretty strong in spectrum. Offer the man a drink, yeah. huh? A pleasure! I've only talked about one Eurocrime movie on this channel, which is shocking because it's one of my favorite genres in Italian exploitation, as well as one of the most popular subgenres in Italy during the 1970s. I've mentioned this before, back during the 60s through the 80s, the Italian film industry insisted that people make movies that were like other popular movies, mostly American movies. So during the 70s, cop and gangster films were growing in popularity in America, so the Italian film industry had people make cop and gangster films in Italy, with that Italian flair. This genre is known as Eurocrime, or Policieschi, if you want the Italian name. The Big Racket was directed by Enzo Castellari, who was a prominent director in Eurocrime. He's the man who gave us High Crime and Street Law, two big movies in the Eurocrime genre, and both starring Franco Nero, one of the biggest actors in Italy at the time. He's not in The Big Racket. This movie is starring Fabio Testi, who was also a big actor in Italy. <laughs> In The Big Racket, Fabio plays Inspector Nico Palmieri. He's a cop who's hot on the trail of this new crime syndicate that has been terrorizing the local shop owners. A new crime boss on the scene has been hiring ruthless hoodlums to commit violent acts against the local businesses in order to extort money from them. I got a family of six. Look, give me a break. It's too much. I hardly make ends meet as it is. Where do I find an extra 300 Listen, a month? Either you pay $75 a week or else you might just lose your peepers like her. Inspector Palmieri is trying to stop this new crime spree, but the criminals are always one step ahead of him, using the system to their advantage. Every time Palmieri gets a witness, or a Good Samaritan tries to help out the police force, the gang always takes them away by going after their loved ones. <laughs> this forces Inspector Palmieri to go outside the law to try and bring down the big racket. The Big Racket has all the elements that makes Policieschi one of my favorite genres. The action is great, and we get a good mix. We get plenty of shootouts, but we also get some fistfights, some explosions, and one of the greatest car stunts I've ever seen. <laughs> Italian movies were known for their crazy stunts, much like Asian and Australian movies. Actors were known for doing their own stunts, or stuntmen would do some crazy shit. In either case, there was little to no safety involved. In the very beginning of The Big Racket, Palmieri follows the gang to their meetup spot in order to find out who's the new boss of this new crime organization. But before he can get out of his car, the gang surrounds him and just trashes his car. Then they roll the car down the hill with him inside. Now, we movie fans have seen many cars rolling down hills. It's nothing new. In terms of action movies, rolling cars is a loved cliché. But in The Big Racket, we see what's going on inside the car. It 
It's an incredible scene. This was in Italy back in 1976. There's no CGI, and Italian filmmakers didn't have the resources in order to do the stunts with the typical Hollywood tricks. You see Fabio Testi in the car rolling around, and the debris in the car, broken glass, papers, and all this other shit, is flying all over the place. So the car is rolling with the actor and the camera inside. There's things going on here that you can't really fake. To this day, director Enzo Castellari will not tell anyone how they did this scene. He gives little hints here and there. It's unknown if those hints are true or false. But he will not tell anybody how this scene was done. And I like that. Nowadays, with special features on Blu-rays and the internet showing people how movies are made, it's nice to have a scene where the mystery is still intact. It makes the film a little more... magical, for lack of a better word. <laughs> And that's one of the main reasons why I love Eurocrime, the rawness of everything. In modern movies, when you see someone jump a great distance or jump over a fence, there are a dozen cuts. But in Eurocrime, when you see someone jump ten feet to the floor, you see someone jump ten feet to the floor. The action scenes are great, but the slower moments keep moving the movie forward with great characters and fun dialogue. It's snappy dialogue. Holy jumping jackrabbits, someone sure took a strong disliking to the decor in here. Hell, nothing's sacred any longer. These delinquents running around destroying everything. Ah, here's one still intact. Here, join your brother. Yeah. But something that always makes me laugh is... People don't curse in this movie. It's weird censorship. Back in the day, some Italian movies were not allowed to have cursing in them. And it's really noticeable in this movie. They replace words like bastard with basket. Or instead of saying shit, they say diddly. Come on, cool down. Pull yourself together before you drop us both into the diddly. You want to collect your pension or not? If we're going to get into the diddly, I'm going to make sure it's because we really earned the right to be in it. I'm a mad diddly erdler! It doesn't make any sense because in other Eurocrime movies, they are allowed to curse. And The Big Racket is a rated R movie. There's violence and nudity throughout the film, but don't you dare say shit. I find it funny because it's a real pile of bull diddly. But if they cooperate with us, they'll be up diddly creek. The characters are what drive this movie forward. The villains are such great scumbags. You hate them for the right reasons. And you want to see Palmieri get them behind bars. <laughs> oh! One kick in the groin. All right. I got him. Your turn now. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Ah, sure, a sizzling face stinger. <laughs> but they're able to thwart him at every turn. There are a few side characters that try to help Palmieri get this gang locked up, but every person that gets involved has their lives ruined by the new crime syndicate. And the reason this hits so hard is because they don't go after the witnesses, they go after their families. There's one guy whose daughter is attacked by the bad guys, and you see how destroyed he is by this. No! But the one that really sticks with me is Palmieri's informant, Pepe. I like to call him the gentleman criminal. Oh, stupendous. I admire your taste. Magnificent. Ah, crocodile. He's probably my favorite character in the movie. He commits all these crimes, but he has a code of honor. He will not hurt anybody. He doesn't even carry a gun. That's what his nephew's there for. Palmieri strikes a deal with Pepe. He allows him to commit some small crimes with the help of his nephew, which allows him to get information on the new crime syndicate. Palmieri makes sure that he's the first cop on the scene, but he always makes sure to show up a little late so that Pepe and his nephew can get away. But he makes it clear that if anyone gets hurt, he will put Pepe behind bars. But make no mistake, if you shoot anybody, you'll be behind bars for a straight 20. Understand? 
Then comes the scene that was a real punch in the gut for me. The new gang finds out who the informant is, and they call the cops on him while he's in the middle of robbing a bank. Before Palmieri can get there, the cops surround the building. That's when the gang members incite the crowd into an angry mob. They killed a hostage! They killed a poor little baby, too! Yeah, yeah, they murdered a hostage. They're killers! I tell you, they killed a hostage! They murdered a hostage, I know! It was a young girl they killed. I told them murder a young girl! They murdered a baby in there, and I bet they'll be paying a month! So what we have here is social commentary about mob justice. This really struck me on my rewatch of The Big Racket. I just did a review of Halloween Kills, and that movie also has a scene, which is social commentary, about mob justice. Michael Myers will be executed tonight, and it will not go without witness! We need all of you! Evil dies tonight! Social commentary in movies does not bother me. Social commentary has been in movies for decades, at least since the 1950s, but there are movies that do it poorly. Halloween Kills did it poorly. In Halloween Kills, the whole mob justice social commentary thing takes up like a third of the movie, and they do a bad job with it because the dialogue sucks, and what makes matters worse is the movie spells everything out for you. If you're doing social commentary in a movie, you should not have to spell it out for the audience, because we get it. Then you have The Big Racket, which came out in 1976. This movie has a scene commenting on mob justice, and it does it so much more efficiently. It does not spell anything out for you, because it doesn't have to. You get what they're trying to say. And they do it within five minutes. Seven at the most. <laughs> Towards the end of the movie, Palmieri gets together all the people that this new crime organization has wronged, and they team up to take out the local crime bosses. It's a great shootout, and every character gets time to shine. They're killing everyone. It's the right amount of chaos. I like chaos in my movies. But you need a little control so that we, the audience, can visually know what's going on. The Big Racket is a great entry in the Eurocrime genre. The pacing is good, the characters are good, the villains are such bastards. I'm sorry, I mean baskets. There's good action throughout, and it all builds up to a fantastic shootout. All in all, I'd say this is a good movie for people just getting into Policieski. And with that, Let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. The body count is way too high for me to count. We'll just say it's somewhere between one and a million. The kills mostly consist of gunshots, but there are a few deaths by explosions and people set on fire. The action is great. Car crashes, shootouts, fistfights, plenty of action for fans to enjoy. The villains are also great. We want to see Palmieri beat these people, but they always manage to outwit him. Speaking of Palmieri, he's a good protagonist. Likeable, quick-witted, you root for him while he goes up against these thugs. The side characters are also well done. They create this group of people that you want to root for. We get one of the best car stunts in Italian exploitation with that hill roll, and the climax is good and thrilling. I'm giving The Big Rack at a 4.7 out of 5. Well worth your time if you're a fan of crime cinema, and a good introduction to those just getting into Eurocrime. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite car stunt in movies. It doesn't have to be a car. Any vehicle will do. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. Ah, damn it, I just stepped in diddly.